Hey there, Tammy Cabell, founder and CEO of Career Resume Consulting, again, and I am here today to talk with you about executive recruiters. If you are in an executive job search, you will eventually work with recruiters. Now, recruiters hold about 11% of all of the jobs out there. That's actually double the amount of jobs that are on job boards, especially for uh, people making over $100,000 or more. So keep in mind that recruiters can be an integral part of your job search and you should always want to use recruiters as part of the job search. Most people do, but they don't know exactly how to work with them. So let me talk with you specifically about how to work best with an executive recruiter. First, understand that recruiters get between 80 and 150 resumes per day unsolicited, usually by email, and they look through those and there's been a study that has shown, and you may have seen this, that has shown an average of six seconds of their attention is spent on each resume. So, in order to get their attention, you want to do things a little bit differently. Here's what I recommend. Send the recruiter and what I would do is go first look at uh, either a list of recruiters online, you can find a good list at i-recruit.com, okay? i-recruit.com. There's a list of some quality recruiters there. Uh, you can also do a Google search for recruiters in your industry, in your type of business, for, ex for example, executive accounting recruiters in Kansas City, Missouri something like that and then you'll find a list of recruiters and then what you'll want to do is go out to LinkedIn and find the name of someone in that recruiting company that has been there for longer than six months. Now you do have to understand that recruiters turn over very fast. The turnover rate or what's called the attrition rate of the recruiting firms is about 200%. In other words, the average recruiter lasts about six months per company before they leave. All right. So keep that in mind and look for somebody that has tenure at that recruiting company. Then send a hard copy of your resume with a handwritten note to their firm. Now the handwritten note should say something like, Dear John, uh, I've been researching your company and I would love to talk with you about any opportunities you might have for someone with my skill sets or someone with my background or someone with my expertise. Sincere, uh, please call me this week. Sincerely, your name. All right, give them a call to action so that they will be more likely to give you a call. Now, they may or may not give you a call. You'll follow up with a phone call with them and see if they have anything available. Now, what you do want to do is you, when you get a hold of a recruiter, whether they call you or you call them, uh, you should ask them how do they prefer to be communicated to? In other words, do they prefer email or do they prefer phone? And so then you'll know whether to call them or email them when you follow up. Also ask them how often should I follow up with you to make sure that I'm top of mind and that you keep me in mind for future opportunities if you don't have anything right now. So it, what I have been told by a lot of recruiters is a good amount of time is about once every three weeks. So put them on your calendar to follow up. Just put a little tickle file or something on your Google calendar or your Outlook calendar that says follow up with so-and-so by email or by phone on this day just to make sure that they understand you're still active in the job search and you're still looking. All right, you're not going to be a pest if you do it every three weeks or so or however often they would like you to contact them all right so keep in mind too this is something that's very very important keep in mind a recruiter wants to hire you they want to place you oftentimes recruiters tend to want to put you in a box so they will tell you frame yourself like this because the employer is looking for somebody like XYZ so you have to be XYZ now if that XYZ fits what you really want to do then go ahead and do that however 
if you don't want that job, don't be placed in a position where you're going after a company that you really don't want to work for or a position that you're not going to be enthusiastic about. Um, just explain to the recruiter what you're truly looking for and what your goals are. Now, something else that you have to keep in mind is that they are told, really told, this is ingrained in them, that they have to get a salary number out of you, so a compensation number. They're going to ask you, what is your, what are your salary requirements? Now, that's really an unfortunate question because it's really not fair because you don't know enough about the position to give them a fair estimation as to what you would expect for that compensation for that job. They want to know right out of the gate, what are you looking for? How much do you need to pay your bills? And if you don't tell them, then they're going to say, well, what did you make in your last job? So I like to give an apples to oranges comparison. For instance, if they ask, what did you make in your last job? You say, well, what I made in my last position might be an apples to oranges comparison for what I would expect in this position because of the difference in the job responsibilities. Uh, can you tell me more about this job response, about this job? Can you tell me, does it have direct reports? Does it have a large budget that I'd be managing? Tell me a little bit more about this job and put it back on them. Also, if they continue to push, which they will, then say, well, do you know if they have, if the company has a range in mind of what they'd like to pay? and then get them to tell you the salary range. And then whatever they say, you say, uh, oh, uh, you know, I'm sure we can come to an agreement if we all feel that I'm the right person for this position. I'm, I'm very negotiable on this. Now, here's why you say that. Once you state your case and you become the answer to their prayers, you become the solution to their problems, and you become the bridge that will take them to where they want to be, they will pay out the nose for you. They will pay anything you want. Trust me, I've seen it before. So if that compensation range is much lower than what your expectations are or what you'd like to make, don't worry about it. I've seen them go higher and there are ways to negotiate that. If you want to work with me to make sure you get that job, I work with recruiters all the time. I'm very, very astute at working with recruiters really on the back end. They don't know that I exist. I work with you so that you can work with recruiters and the recruiters work with the company. They are gatekeepers just like an internal recruiter or an HR professional would be within the company. So I do do interviewing and negotiation coaching myself as an a la carte service and so feel free to give us a call at 816-600-2478 or you can email me directly at Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y, at beyondjobsearching.com. All right, so uh, when it comes to recruiters, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to tell you. I think that's about it. Um, do know that they really are on your side. They are trying to help you. And a lot of them will tell you specifically what they want you to do on your resume to make it look exactly the way that, um, that, that they want. Now, one more thing that I want to mention. I have found that recruiters are the only ones that prefer a chronological resume. Now, if you've listened to any of my other videos, you know that I espouse the wonderful advantages of having a one-page functional or skills-based resume, and I've got copies of those, samples of those, on our website, careerresumeconsulting.com. You should really take a look at those. If you want a full-size copy that's a PDF, just email me, Tammy at beyondjobsearching.com, and I'll send you one. Um, but here's, here's what I found. They prefer chronological because it gives them more information as to when and where you did your accomplishments. However, they call you more often when you send a functional in the format that we make. It's, it's really weird. They, they respond to that functional and they will call you and say, hey, I love you, don't like the resume. 
give me a chronological. So you always want to have a backup chronological to give them. However, they respond better to a functional. So when you do send them a hard copy of the resume, send a functional because they will call you and say, hey, give me another copy of the resume. But here's what that allows you to do. You are then on the phone with them and you can sell yourself over the phone, which is exactly the situation that you want to be in, rather than having them make a hiring decision about you based on a piece of paper. So I hope this has served you today. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick video to tell you about executive recruiters because that is an important part of an executive search. Again, we work with six-figure and seven-figure professionals all over the world. So if you want to talk with us about how we can help you in your job search to shave months off of your search, saving you tens of thousands of dollars in lost revenue, literally. Uh, so give us a call at 816-600-2478 or you can check out our website, free resources there, aplenty, at careerresumeconsulting.com. I'm Tammy Cabell and it's been a pleasure sharing this information today. I wish you the very best success. I look forward to hearing about your success and I will talk with you again soon. Thanks and bye bye now.